A giant falcon to this day has been the one and only hunter exotic that many can say is a bit OP. Compared to say Frosties that allows users to get back their abilities fast by simply running around, a giant falcon allows users to have a volatile rounds for void weapons, a 35% damage buff and reserve overshields when you're inching close to death. And although you may say, well, hero, you have to use void weapons to trigger most of its effects, while true, there are ways around it. Now, I'm not going to show you that today, but instead I'm going to show you a seasonal meta build that you should jump on board with. It's going to allow you to have a 94% base damage buff when using Fighting Lion, Gyra, Weakened Clear mod and Front of Might mod, to a 188% to 200% damage buff once we get things going with Retrofit, Escapade or any heavy void weapon. But that's not all, with Fighting Lion's amazing ability to inflict higher damage against shielded foes and volatile rounds enhancing the destructive nature of it, it's going to take the meaning of breaching clear to a whole new level. I'll call it a Volatile Lion, although you can name it a Volatile Puppy if it's not your thing. So to start, you're going to want to have Vanishing Step so you can become invisible each time you dodge, and then you want Stylish Executioner where after defeating a weakened, suppressed or volatile target, you'll become invisible and gain true sight. With these two combined, you'll always be able to retain your invisibility status when one ability is on cooldown, and thus there won't be a long wait involved to keep the flow of build going. On top of this, as we'll be dodging quite a bit, I would advise you to have the Markman Dodge class ability so you can auto reload your weapons on the fly. And this will be very important when using Fighting Lion or any weapon with a low or slow reload speed. The fragments now should reflect upon the user and how often you intend to play into your Zotic on hand. As being invisible will be giving us the greatest advantage around, I would recommend you have the Echo Obscurity Fragment so that each time you use a finisher, you'll always go invisible. Now, hear me out. Although we have two ways already to go invisible, this method here will come in handy with triggering the Reserve Overshields effect on our Zotic and make it a lot more easier to do so. If you feel this is unnecessary, then you can swap it out for Echo of Persistence instead so you can extend your invisibility for longer and for survival situations. From here, Echo of Remnants for longer lasting grenade duration, Echo of Undermining for a 15% debuff via grenades, and Echo of Starvation for getting the Devour effect via Orbs of Power is a good setup to continue onwards. For your mods and stats, this is going to lead into having a high damage rate and the ability to regenerate ability energy faster without the need of crucial mods involved. Now, mobility should be maxed out, along with resilience and discipline being relatively high. However, a lot of this will require good armor rolls to achieve this, which not a lot of people can do. So, having your mobility at 70 is a good sweet spot to aim for, as you can use elemental worlds to further boost regeneration speeds. Mods such as Bound for World will give users the ability to create two worlds instead of one, which is a massive boost overall. Then having Well of Utility times 2 will further increase the regen speed of your class ability along with the Perpetration mod. These three mods will increase mobility cooldown rate as if it's on par with having a 100 mobility stat, and thus this will save you on mod space. Resilience now can stay at 60 for that damage reduction, although it can be increased if you wish further while Grenade should stay at 70, as though you'll be using the Echo of Undermining mod for applying debuffs, we have another way of applying constant debuffs without the need of waiting for a grenade ability to recharge after use. There are however 3 mods you should have on hand at all times, and this is Phantom Might for that 25% damage boost for weapons, Reaper Wildmaker so we can create elemental worlds after using our class ability, and Weakened Clear so we can apply a 15% debuff to target via grenade launcher. All of these will hugely affect how the build works, and it will be important for you to make sure that everything rotates as shown. Having our mobility recharge rate how it is will allow us to consistently stay invisible for longer, and this will also trigger Reaping Wellmaker and Powerful Well in full effect after a kill, which will always be consistent. This will make sure that your Gyro Falcon, Font of Might, Fighting Lion, and Weak and Clear all in hand will be ready the moment you activate your class ability or even take out a debuff target. I've made this as simple and easy for users to understand so the moment you activate one thing, everything else will fall in place. Now leftovers, I would recommend you then add on the Harmonic Siphon mods that you can produce orbs of power easily and the scavenger mod 
specifically the heavy machine gun, so that we can get away with finding more ammo when we need it most. Now lastly, the weapons being used, and although we have a specific setup available, you can opt out of them for something else if you desire. The main primary we'll be using is Fighting Lion, as this will allow us to inflict heavy damage to any targets, whether direct or just nearby them. By doing damage, we can inflict a higher damage against shielded opponents, increase reload speed, and also have the chance to auto-refill upon getting multiple kills. All of these making the weapon highly desirable for breaching clear situations. I will say that applying the Gyro Falcon Exotic effect to the weapon makes it even more better than its current state, as one issue with these type of grenade launchers is that if you hit a target with it, but just miss by a few inches, it will do damage but require you to reload or swap out for something else to quickly finish up. Having volatile rounds added on will allow us to fix that issue and also spread its effects out far and wide to others nearby, so if we kill a target that is affected by volatile rounds, and that spreads to others, it will most likely trigger a larger explosion and take them out in one go. Handy for getting your weapon to auto reload or multi kills much more easier. Now of course I will leave the primary to your own decision depending on the activity you play, as mainly the fighting lion acts as a primary within itself. Our heavy of course is the retrofit escapade and I'll keep it short as you have all used it to its fullest by now. If you have the season pass, you can get a roll that has 4th time the charm and 1 for all, which is a fantastic perk combo for long lasting DPS against bosses alike. From what I worked out, if we apply our debuff, Phantom Might, Jar Falcon's damage buff, 1 for all, and the ambush origin trait, we can get around a 188% damage buff for just the weapon alone, so nearly 200% overall. Fantastic, right? And all of this is just from a single legendary weapon which you can easily get or farm. Alternatively though, Dead Messenger, Deafening Whisper, Truth Teller and Orin Smile are great outs to use if you don't want to use Fighting Lion at all. The last two weapons I just mentioned I don't believe are in rotation anymore, so this does limit down to what you can use instead, and truth be told, I would recommend you stick with Fighting Lion as it's generally a really great exotic, although slept on. For heavy outs, Corrected Measure and Shattered Cypher, and the newly updated Commemoration is a good backup as well. Commemoration specifically, I can get 4th time the charm and reconstruction in one slot, while the other can get Focus Fury and Fighting Lion is last. You just need to find a group to farm it from, and well, you're good from there. So with everything combined, you can become an artillery shell of destruction that no one's able to keep up or counter against. Dipping in and out of danger, your weapons will always be buffed and volatile to a touch, which makes it highly effective against solo or group targets. It's as simple as that and thanks to the ability to go invisible through the three different methods and ways, we can fully utilize Jarl Falcon like it was designed to be, and this honestly makes it the very best exotic to use for this season and the next. You're getting more bang for your buck using this setup, and although many will say otherwise, you're getting a consistent in-game build that won't fail you. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on the content shared, then please leave a comment below, while at the same time if you enjoy the content and want more of these videos in the future, then leave a like and a sub while here. I will leave a dim link for this build, and if you want more stuff like this, then I have a playlist available covering all types of builds you desire, and more in the future. It was great sharing today's video with you all, so I genuinely hope to see you all again soon.